Hi, this is Karen Reno, and I'll be explaining how to do Western blots in the Biochem Lab class at SF State. Using a gradient gel, load lane 1 with kaleidoscope markers. Kaleidoscope markers are like molecular weight markers, but the proteins are bound to colored dye, so when the gel runs, you will be able to see the markers with the naked eye. Load your prepared samples into all other lanes except for lane 6. Run the gel at 180 volts for 90 minutes. After the gel has finished running, remove the gel case from the chamber. Next, remove the gel from the plastic case. Do this by first removing the gel in the slot with a razor blade. Then use the green comb to separate the two halves. Carefully pry the two halves apart. Run the razor blade along the two sides of the gel and cut the wells off of the top of the gel. Place the case in a tray containing 20% methanol transfer buffer, and with the gel side down, shake it to loosen the gel. Obtain one nitrocellulose sandwich set. This is what one set looks like. The blue tissue sheets will be discarded. The two pieces of filter paper look like cardstock. The nitrocellulose has a shiny appearance and should only be handled with tweezers. You will also need two sheets of sponge. Soak the sponges and the nitrocellulose membrane in transfer buffer for 15 minutes prior to assembling the sandwich. To assemble the sandwich, lay the cassette open on the bench. Build your sandwich on the black side of the cassette. Place one of the sponge sheets on the cassette. Wet one sheet of the filter paper in transfer buffer and place it on the sponge sheet. Using a pipette, saturate the filter paper with transfer buffer and make sure that there are no air bubbles. Do this for every layer of the sandwich. Next, carefully place the gel onto the filter paper. Make sure that the gel has been flipped from top to bottom so that when the cassette is in the chamber, the tracking die line will be at the top of the cassette. The top of the cassette is the side with the clips and the bottom is the side with the hinges.
Using tweezers, place the nitrocellulose on top of the gel. Wet the second sheet of filter paper and place it on the nitrocellulose. Next, take a glass pipette or a stirring rod and firmly roll it over the sandwich. Place the second sheet of sponge on the filter paper. Close the cassette and clip it shut. Place the cassette in the chamber with the red side facing out. Placing the cassette in this orientation will cause the proteins to migrate from the gel to the nitrocellulose membrane. Transfer at 200 volts for 60 minutes. During transfer, the membrane, which has unoccupied binding sites, is incubated with the antigen. The antigen transfers from the gel to the membrane. The blue triangle represents the antigen of interest. The red concave polygon represents another antigen. Once the transfer has finished, remove the cassette from the chamber and open it with the black side facing down. Carefully peel back the top sponge layer. With tweezers, peel back the nitrocellulose from the gel. If transfer has occurred, the rainbow markers will be visible on the membrane. When the gel ran, the low molecular weight proteins were at the bottom of the gel. The gel was then inverted and the proteins were transferred. Now the low molecular weight proteins are at the top of the membrane. This is the list of bands and the corresponding molecular weights of the proteins. Blocking the unoccupied binding sites with nonspecific protein reduces the background noise of the western block. The blocking solution is made of a 5% dry milk solution in TBS. The light blue circles represent the blocking agent. With tweezers, place the nitrocellulose into a tray containing the blocking solution. Cover the tray and place it in the fridge overnight.
Next, place the membrane in a weigh boat. Using the comb to determine the location of the lanes, cut along lane 6. This is what the membrane looks like after it's been cut. Wash the membrane twice in TTBS. TTBS is 0.05% tween 20 in TBS. All washes and incubations should be done on the shaker. Next, an antigen-specific primary antibody, shown in yellow, will bind to the antigen. After the two TTBS washes, pour the TTBS off of the membrane and pour the diluted primary antibody onto the membrane. The dilute antibody is a 1 to 20,000 dilution of a stock mouse anti-E. coli alkaline phosphatase monoclonal antibody. Incubate the membrane for one hour in the primary antibody solution. Then wash two more times with TTBS. Next, a secondary antibody enzyme conjugate, shown in green and orange, will be bound to the primary antibody. The secondary antibody is a 1 to 10,000 dilution of a goat anti-mouse antibody conjugated to horseradish peroxidase. Pour the secondary antibody solution onto the membrane and incubate for one hour. Wash the membrane two more times in TTBS. Next, the detection substrate will be exposed to the membrane. Horseradish peroxidase catalyzes the conversion of the substrate to a colored precipitate. To make the detection substrate, mix one part Opti-4CN diluent with nine parts millq water. Right before use, add 0.02% Opti-4CN substrate. Pour the substrate onto the membrane and shake by hand. The colored precipitate will begin to appear. Develop for no more than five minutes. To stop development, pour the substrate off of the membrane. This is what the membranes will look like after the western blot is complete. Good luck with the western blots and thanks for watching.